Hey guys, so now we're gonna talk about hits and sound design. Now there is not one exact recipe for hits, you know, which you can always reuse, but I want to talk a bit about like, what kind of elements you need to keep in mind to get really powerful trailer hits, and what kind of characteristics you want to make sure you have, um, and you want to kind of analyze whether or not you have, to sort of fix your layering, maybe you're trying to layer hits and it just doesn't sound as powerful as you want, maybe you can pay attention to these things and see if you have them and it can help you. Uh, I'm going to need my old my old paint whiteboard <laughs> here to kind of show you what uh, I mean. So from my experience, uh, a really powerful trailer hit has several characteristics. In fact, it has pretty much every characteristic, and you will understand shortly. Uh, what I mean by that is that a trailer hit, first of all, if we talk about this frequency spectrum, is going to be pretty full from uh, 20 to 20 kilohertz. Well, of course, this is an exaggera exaggeration. It's never gonna, going to be perfectly flat but it's going to be fairly full uh, from 20 to 20k. So what I mean by that is if you take, for example, this one here. That's a great hit. You know, it goes pretty high, it goes pretty low, right? So that's the first thing. Now that's in terms of frequency response. If you want a big trailer hit or something that feels, you know, full and complete, you're going to want to make sure you have all the frequencies being occupied by some hit content. Now. The number two thing is in terms of dynamics, and that's the trickiest one because dynamics are fairly difficult to understand, at least to hear. With a good trailer hit, you typically have you typically have at least two layers, or you have one layer which has everything, but usually it's done with at least two layers. You're gonna have a layer that's going to be a bit longer, a bit wetter, a bit more diffuse. So what I mean by that is going maybe it's going to be a bit more like this, the transient, and then it's going to decay for a long time, right? So it's going to be more of a, like a whoosh or like a low boom, or maybe like a, a cymbal crash, you know, but not the, the snappy part of the cymbal crash, like a cymbal swell, like a whew, right? That's going to be the more diffuse part, the more long part of the hit. But if you just have that, it's going to sound very weak and very not percussive. So at the same time, usually what these hits have is that they have a very tight, both in the bass and the highs, a very tight element. So it's going to look more like this, maybe. And it's going to decay also much quicker, right? So you're going to have this, uh, actually, let me draw the, the other part of this wave here. Oh, well, that's not very symmetric, but you, you get my point. Actually, let me do it better. So you're going to have this tight hit here, which might have a waveform that looks a bit more like this. And at the, at the same time, you're going to have a longer, um, you know, a longer waveform that's going to be more, more low boom like, right? And if you layer these two types of hits on top of each other, you're typically going to have a very satisfying hit. So, check this one out. Now the whoosh uh, in front is op optional, I guess. But it's nice to have, but pay attention to the impact itself. So here we have a reverb tail. We also have some low boom tail. You can hear some stuff in the bass here, right? Now, if we just pay attention to the attack itself, there is a snappy kind of mid-range treble, treble element, which you can actually hear if you just solo the band here. Right, so there is this attack element to it, but in the bass also. So if you focus on just the punch, if we just focus on, on the bass here. Right, there is one specific punch that's going to be above the uh, subtail. That's going to be clearly louder than the subtail, and it's there. If you didn't have this sub punch, it would be sound kind of lame. Actually, let me try to do something. What I can just try to do to simulate that is uh, with an L2, I can just crush it, trying to remove that punch element. See, this sub kind of, mm, you, you can kind of lose this sub here with this limiter. Right, so it's very important to have it. Now, um, you don't need the very long tail in every trailer hit, of course, because you have the, the faster ones. So this is kind of the main kind of every measure type of hit, right? Then you have the faster ones. <clears throat> in that case, it's more about the short punchy element. You know, that's what's going to be the most important. And of course, making sure that the frequency response isn't disgusting. Mm. 
There is some punch, but it's a little bit rumbly this one, right? So maybe if you want to enhance that, you can use different techniques. For example, you can use the sidechain multiband expansion technique, uh, which I showed before, which is basically using the high end, the precise high end of a sound as a trigger to trigger expansion. So expansion means we're gonna kind of boost the signal for a short time. It's like the opposite of compression. So we kind of we want the the high end. So we want internal sidechain. We want the high end of the kick to trigger a low end kind of transient boost, right? So let me just make it more uh, obvious. So short attack, a sh fairly sharp knee, fairly high ratio, a short release as well because we don't want to create a low boom, we just want to boost a bit of kickiness, if that makes sense. There you go. Ah, there we go. Right? So well, that's maybe a bit over the top, but you, you get the idea. So we can create that short punch element if it's not quite there. And you could even apply this to this uh, if you have a precise high end. So you need just a precise trigger. In that case, we can use the high end from the signal to trigger the low end punch. You can also use external sidechain with like a, a click or like a hi-hat sound to create a precise trigger. Now, of course, this is not the only way to fix this issue. Uh, you know, you don't always have to add punch to a specific hit. You could always have one that's kind of not very punchy and another one that's very punchy and very kick-like and layer the two layers and get the punch this way, all right? So again, there is no, there is no one magical formula to kind of perfect this. Uh, you can get a powerful hit with one layer, two layer, three layer, four layers. And you don't always need more layers. If you only layer stuff that's a bit flat and not very useful, you're not going to gain much from this. You're just going to layer a flat layer on top of another flat layer. You could just have one layer that's a bit too flat and use a trick to add, like use a, tr a multiband transient designer or something like this, or a boss digital labs trans transgressor too. Uh, you can use transgressor, you can use, there is so many uh, things you can use. Um, so there are several ways to kind of fix this issue. So what I'm trying to teach you here is more like why it's not working and not so much uh, this exact formula because there is no exact formula, right? But you need to understand th this. You know, in terms of frequency response, of course, if it's not uh, balanced, it won't sound good. So I could just have this one layer, which is nice and punchy now and bassy. Maybe even a bit too much. Okay, and now if I suddenly add a ton of mids, well, this completely overshadows my bass punch, right? So it, it becomes useless again. Um, yeah, this one is interesting. This one's interesting because it has a bit sharper highs. So maybe I don't need so much more bass punch, so it's okay. I can just layer it with my punchy one. And I can use this to just add the shimmer that I'm missing from the other one, right? So let's try these two together. There is a bit of a resonance here. Right, this is my punchy tight one. Maybe I can make the, the tightness even like... Oh yeah, there is a bit of a sharp kick here. Nice, so I can use this and can use this one for like the... Yeah, this one can be used for more like the longer high texture, right? The kind of a... Uh, it's a slightly more metallic, longer, less precise high texture. There's a bit of a noisy tail to it compared to this one, which is very kick-like. It's still a bit... A bit... Okay, that's tighter, okay. Right, so that's a good example of two very nice hits together now. Okay, this this one, you know, uh, this one is not very punchy. It has a nice click. The bass is just kind of like a downer. It's a bit like a downer bass, right? It's, so it's like do do. It's not very punchy, but it can add a nice kind of downer element kind of filling the low ends, but I'm not going to rely on this to add too much punch and I'm going to be careful to make sure that this doesn't blur the punch I created with trailer hits. I'm going to remove a bit of muddy 
mids and let's see how it behaves now. Maybe it's a bit too loud. Nice, so what about with the big major hits now? Pretty good. Uh, let's check in context. Of course, uh, some stuff is wrong here. Remember that hits are very important, they can be a little bit loud. You know, that's quite solid because we can feel a little punch now in every single hit. If I just remove this, see how weak it becomes? So guys, now you can see uh, what we need to pay attention to when it comes to making hits. So for like the big major hits, make sure you have all these components, the long tail, uh, a bit of a long sub as well, but also the, the short kick stuff that pokes through to really give this oomph and it's, it, this, this kind of impact uh, on the moment, right? And then for the shorter kind of faster hits, uh, make sure you mostly have, you know, it's not going to be as long and as boomy. You don't want the boom tails to overlap, right? You don't want the, the tail to overlap too much, but make sure that's you kind of have this tight, snappy element, both in the highs and the lows. And of course you have a bit of tail, right? It shouldn't be too dead and close like a, like a metal kick drum, but you need this kind of tight element, right? And then it's about like, like how you can achieve this feel, how you can achieve that uh, with the sounds that you have. You could layer more stuff, or you could try to focus on having one great sound and then use another one to enhance a little bit more. Or maybe you just need one sound, right? So there is no magical formula, but when you analyze the characteristics of a sound, pay attention to these things. So guys, I hope it was useful and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.